I came across uh, what's called Maslow's Pyramid of Needs, right? So his hierarchy of needs. You know, you often see these in business models and things, uh, how to build up a, a successful business or successful training program, whatever it may be. <clears throat> so there's this hierarchy of, of people's needs. Now, obviously, as, as we know from experience, uh, the base need for all people is food and water and warmth, right? Um, if you're not, if you've no food in your stomach, you're not really going to be debating uh, which is more efficient, a hybrid engine or an efficient diesel. It doesn't really matter to you if you're hungry, right? So uh, kind of our most basic need is food and water and, uh, and warmth. Then slightly up from that, uh, shelter and safety, right? Again, if you've got a, a stomach full of food, but at any moment you could be invaded or attacked, uh, it's, it's not a healthy environment, you're not going to thrive, okay? So the, these kind of basic needs at the, at the most fundamental level, food and water, warmth and shelter, and safety. Okay, now we, we get up into the next level, so we're in kind of the middle, middle of the pyramid. Middle of the pyramid, right? Uh, at this stage now. Uh, and then he, he identifies our, our, what he calls our psychological needs. Okay? So the, the, the need for love. It comes, that's right, right above food and water, shelter, safety, warmth, and a bit of security. The next thing that's fundamental in, in, in Maslow's hierarchy of, of people's needs is love. Right? So a sense of belonging, family. Um, he, would say, he would say intimate relationship, but obviously the intimate relationship doesn't necessarily have to mean intimate in that way. It can also be just deep friendship. Okay. Uh, so intimate friendship. Um, and it's, just, it's, it's amazing how even, like, this has nothing to do with faith. This is just observing how humankind is. That love comes right in there, that need for belonging. Above that then he places uh, the need for, the need to be esteemed. So we've got food in our bellies, we're in a safe environment, um, we're loved, and then we begin to do things. You know, uh, you succeed in, in an exam, you succeed in, in a sporting event or a musical event or whatever it may be, and people say, well done. Again, this sounds so, so basic, but it's interesting, when you, just when you see these plotted out like that, it, it drives home a lot, which we'll, we'll see in a second. So they need to be esteemed. They need to be told, you are good. You know, well done. I'm proud of you. It's right there, like in our fundamental needs as people. And then the, the top of the pyramid then is what he would call self-actualization. So we achieve our full potential, so in whatever field that may be, you know, uh, a study or academics or, or sport or politics or whatever. You, we, we become all that we can be, you know, all these gifts that we have, we're able to, to, to use those to our, our maximum potential. Okay. So I was looking through this this morning and I was thinking, well, the reason I was looking through this was because our gospel says, when a man has had a great deal given to him, a great deal will be demanded of him. And I thought, well, obviously all these fundamental needs of ours are taken care of, so then we should be able to focus on self-realization. And then as I was looking through the list, I thought, actually, hold on. I think all of our physiological needs are taken care of. Yes, none of us are hungry. And I think in Ireland, I doubt there's anyone. There are, yes, there are, maybe are, there are some, some homeless people, obviously, uh, unfortunately, uh, who still don't have regular meals. But for the vast majority of people, food isn't a concern. We, there's plenty of food for us. Like we're, uh, we're well taken care of that way. And we live in a relatively safe country. We're not going to be invaded any day soon, as far as we know. Uh, but then I thought, actually, are, are our desires for love being fulfilled? Because one would presume they are. And actually, I think our world presumes that they are. Because, see, if, if, if the more you start to attack the, the foundation, the less you can build up. I mean, if you don't get the, the, the foundation right, you, you can't build a two-story house, right? Even if your first story is kind of dodgy, you can't build a two-story house. You, you have, to, you have to build from the ground up. So we would, I think most of us would presume that in society today, our needs for love are met. But maybe they're not. And I actually don't think they are. I'm just thinking now, as, as I was praying about this this morning, I was thinking of a lot of young people that we work with. And 
today being, being, being the way it is with social media and that, they're quite addicted to their little phones, large phones, dare I say. And, uh, and they spend an awful lot of time on this, an awful lot of time in communication with people. But I don't know how loved they feel, if they feel loved at all, because on social media, your popularity, the number of likes you get, is very, very conditional. It's very fickle. If you come out as, as pro-life, if you come out as, as Catholic, if you come out as pro-God in any way, you can very, very quickly lose a huge following, lose a huge number of your so-called friends. So friendship is very kind of tentative, and it's very, you have to be very careful. You have to kind of manage it carefully and not say anything politically incorrect. And if, 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 if people start posting Black Lives Matter stuff, then you have to start posting Black Lives Matter. And if you don't, you're, you're racist. Oh, sorry. I, I, Everything is very conditional, you know? So it's a very insecure world. And from, a, from this desire for long, this desire for love that people have, it's, it, it, it teaches them that love is conditional. That you will be loved if you behave a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, believe certain things. And conversely, you will not be loved if you don't do these things. So then love, love isn't isn't, isn't all that it's cracked up to be. <coughs> we still long for it, and it's, it's still something that we will almost do anything to get, but even when you get it, it's not great. You know, so, like, same with superficial relationships. You know, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a desire in people's hearts, yes, uh, and then they achieve that goal, and, okay, at the end of it, they tend to feel relatively empty, but what else, what else is there to do? So let's just try again. And so it's, it's this, this strange kind of vicious cycle or vicious circle of, uh, of emptiness and lovelessness. So then we kind of get stuck then at this level then because like, oh, everything that, that, that follows then, esteem and self-actualization, they're going to be very, very difficult to achieve if we don't even feel loved as we are. And if we don't feel loved as we are by human beings, it's going to be very difficult for us to understand ourselves as loved by God. You know, St. Teresa of Avila said there a couple of days ago, we were, it was her feast day, we were, we were meditating here one of the evenings that Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. People see what the church believes through us. It's, we can have all the books we want, and even the Bible, wonderful and all as it is, will remain a book on the shelf unless people see Christianity lived. Generosity lived. Love, selfless love lived. Forgiveness lived. Otherwise, these are just nice words, but they, are, they remain on a shelf. So people's desire for love, I think, actually isn't being answered today, which leads to this, this, this just absolute famine of love, which is what leads people to do to spend so long and, and, and this, in this endless search for fulfillment and for love on social media. Okay, two more points and then I'll wind up. How then can we respond to this? If we understand kind of what's going on, it allows us to respond better to, to the needs. We then, hopefully anyway, our lives revolve around God who is love. God who is love and therefore the fulfillment of, of every desire. Because apart from like food and water, uh, the next desires of our hearts are, are, are for love and belonging and intimacy and, 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 and that I'm wanted, that people miss me when I'm not there. And so if, 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 if we can introduce people to, to God, who is the fulfillment of all desire, who satisfies all needs, if we can be a friend to them, if we can show that we care, if they'll begin to believe that this, this unconditional love actually exists, that it's real. So like, the, the responsibility placed in our hands is incredible. When a man has had a great deal given him, a great deal will be demanded of him. If we've been given the gift of faith, a lot is expected of us. To share it, to witness to it, and to allow ourselves to be transformed by it. So a lot, a lot, a lot rides on us. One last point. The, the top of the pyramid, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, is self-actualization. And there's a lot of that kind of idea going around, you know, I mean, to be all one can be and re realize one's potential and, you know, develop all of your skills and talents and all this kind of thing. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but 
I think there's something missing in all of this. The more we talk about ourselves or our self-realization in terms of me becoming all I can be and me becoming, uh, you know, winning this and achieving that, it's all so self-oriented. You know, it's all about me becoming me so that I can be me and everyone can see me and then I feel more like me. <laughs> it's just me, like, it's, it's, just, it's all so kind of empty, I think. In, uh, the theology of the body, St. John Paul II, uh, is just an absolute genius when it comes to these things. But he talks about, very often, about the gift of self. The gift of self. So when I give myself, that's when I'm fully realized. In the giving of... So when I actually, if you will, empty myself for love of another, that's actually what fulfills me. Because if, if my life is focused on achieving my career and winning that medal and getting that promotion and getting the house, the lifestyle, whatever it may be that I want, I guarantee you when you achieve it, there'll be a temporary high, but it'll fizzle away just like everything else. Whereas self-gift, self-gift, that's, that's how we authentically realize ourselves. That's what makes us truly human because that's what makes us more like God. Self-gift, self-emptying, that's what Jesus does. Right? He loves us so much that he empties himself. Jesus then, who is truly God and truly man, we then become more like God. him, who is truly man, by self-gift. So then our, our self-realization is actually in the giving of ourselves, not in just achieving all of our potential in a materialistic or success sense, but in the, the achieving, achieving our potential achieving our potential in the quantity of love that we can give. Love, which the world is starving for. So it's just, it's just very interesting how all this kind of comes together. The world is starving for love. We have the source of love. The world says that you will be happy when there's intimacy in your life and when you've achieved all of your potential and yourself, you know, you've achieved all that you can. God would say, you're fully at peace, fully realized, when you've learned how to give of yourself, when you've learned how to serve, when you've learned how to kneel down before God and before man in service, in humility. And so we ask the good Lord. We pray for all of those who, who are lost today. We pray especially for our young people, for those who do not know what unconditional love looks like. We pray for those who are caught in this just this spiral of, of emptiness and superficiality in this plastic world that they live in. We ask that the Lord will show each of them, and probably through faith friends, that self-realization is achieved through self-gift. Amen. <laughs>